Hello and welcome to System Recipes. I'm Reno Cabral. In today's video, I'm going to show you different methods that you can use to remotely manage your Windows Server. I'm here on my domain controller. On your Server Manager, if you just click on Local Server, you will see that Remote Management has been enabled by default. Obviously, if you would like to disable it, you can just click on Enabled and then uncheck Enable Remote Management on this server. And you can, to enable it, just select and click OK. To disable or enable remote management on a server core machine, you'll have to use PowerShell commands. The command that we are going to use is configure SM remoting. So the command is configure hyphen SM remoting dot exe space hyphen disable to disable remote management. You can then refresh your server manager and you will see that remote management has been disabled. To re-enable remote management, use the same command with the tag enable. Then if you just refresh your server manager, you can now see that remote management has been enabled. Once you have remote management enabled, you can use server manager to manage multiple servers on your network. If you just click on all servers, you can see that I've just got one server, that's my local server, london-dc. To add servers to your server manager, just right click on all servers and click add servers. You can then specify the name of the server that you would like to add. Click on find now, then select the server and click on the arrow and click OK. You can now see that London DC Core has been added to my server manager. By doing that, you can easily manage your server core machine from your server manager. You can also create server groups. For now I've got two domain controllers on my in my London site. So to create a group, all you have to do is select the servers and then click on manage and click on create server groups. You can then specify a name for the group. Select the servers that you would like to add to the group and click on the arrow. Then click OK. Once that's done, on your left hand side you can see that a group has been created. If you click on that group, you can see that two servers have been added to that group. You can also use remote server administration tools to remotely manage your servers. As an administrator, it's more likely that you'll be using a desktop machine at your desk or else maybe a laptop, so which will be running Windows 7, 8 or 10. So what you can do is, from your local PC, all you have to do is download remote server administration tool and make sure that you download the right one for your operating system. I've already downloaded the file and installed it. Once you install the file, if you just click on start and then go to all, you should see Windows administrative tools. If you just expand that and you can now see all your tools, Active Directory sites and services, users and computers, DHCP, DNS, let's open DNS and then add the server over here. Enter the IP address or the name of the server. Click OK. Once that's done, you can now remotely manage your DNS server. If you have multiple DNS servers, obviously you can add multiple servers. You can also use remote desktop connection to remotely manage a server. I'm here on my domain controller. If you click on local server, you will see that remote desktop connection has been disabled by default. To enable remote desktop connection, if you just click on disabled and click on allow remote connections to this computer. Click apply and click OK. If you just refresh your server manager, you should see that remote desktop has been enabled. Now if you just move to your client computer, and if you just search for remote desktop connection, select remote desktop connection, you can enter your server name or else your IP address. You can then log in. Once you log in, you will have access to your remote server. 
you can also remotely manage from a server core machine I'm here on my London DC core server we just go into PowerShell so the command that I'm going to use to remotely manage from a server core machine is enter ps session space hyphen computer name and then the name of the computer space hyphen credential space dollar cred it will then prompt you for your login once you log in any commands that I type in over here will be executed on London DC if I just quickly do an IP config can see that the IP address is 1.2 to move out of this session you can just type in exit you can also use a command ETSN so the command is ETSN the name of the server that you would like to remotely manage hyphen credential space hyphen cred press enter and again if you just log in you can now remotely manage your server from a server core machine you can see that I'm connected to London DC and any command from now on will be executed on London DC server you can also remotely manage server core machine using Windows PowerShell web access tool for that we need to install Windows PowerShell web access on your server core machine so I'm here on my London DC core and if you go into PowerShell once you're in PowerShell type in the command install windows feature name win windows PowerShell web access space hyphen include management tools this will install the feature windows PowerShell web access Once the feature has been installed, use the command install hyphen PSWA web application space hyphen use test certificate. Because we don't have a certificate authority, I'm just using a self assigned certificate. Press enter. Now you can see that it's giving us the information about the web. So it's going to be the server name that's london hyphen dc hyphen co that's the name of the server forward slash pswa so once that's done the next command that we need to use is add pswa authorization rule space hyphen username space the username space hyphen computer name and then the computer name space hyphen configuration name space microsoft.powershell what this does is it authorizes the user to access powershell web access and specifies the computer that the user can use to access powershell web access even if you're administrator powershell web access will not allow you by default you have to specify the username that can access powershell web access so once that's done press enter to run the command sorry I had a typing error add hyphen PSWA authorization rule and now you can see that the rule has been added the user is Reno destination computer London hyphen DC that's my domain controller so now let's go to our domain controller to access London hyphen DC co so if you open a web browser and type in HTTPS colon slash slash london hyphen dc hyphen co slash pswa and press enter it will then prompt you that it's an untrusted uh, website so if you just click on I understand the risk because we're using a self-assigned certificate that's the reason why it shows that you can now log in with your username and password So if you enter your username, password and the name of your computer and press sign in and once you sign in you can now access PowerShell on your remote server. 
So I'm here on my domain controller, that's London DC, and I'm connected to London DC Co using a web browser. So this is how you use Windows PowerShell Web Access. Now let's have a look how to remotely manage a non-domain server. I already have a non-domain server and I've named it as server-co. I would like to manage this server from my London DC server. For me to do that, I will have to add the non-domain server to my trusted host list on my management computer. So the non-domain server can be a standalone server. It can also be a server on a different domain. So let's add that server to our trusted host list. To do that, let's go to PowerShell. And the command that we need to run is winrm space get space winrm slash config slash client. This command will show you all the computers that have been added to your trusted host list. As you see over here, I haven't added any computers at the moment. But it's really important that you have a look at it because if you add any computers to your trusted host list, it will overwrite. So the command to add the server to our trusted host list is set hyphen item wsman colon slash local host slash client slash trusted host space the name of the server space concatenate space slash force. The last two tags, I don't really have to add them, but if you already have any servers added to your trusted host list, you need to make sure that you add these two tags because if you don't, it's going to override your trusted host list. Okay, so for now, I'll just press enter and add the server core machine to my trusted host list. So now let's go to our server manager. Right click all servers and click add servers. We just click on DNS and type in the IP address of the server that you would like to add. And search for it. If you select the server and press the arrow to, add, to select it, and click OK. So now you can see that the server core machine has been added but you can see that a Kerberos target resolution error, but that's because it's not in the same domain. You will also see a refresh error, but nothing to worry about it. It's something to do with WinRM. So the next thing that we need to do is right click and click on manage as. We then enter the username and password. Click on remember my credentials and click OK. Now once that's done, you can remotely manage your non-domain server. So I hope this video has been useful. Please hit the like button if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and please subscribe to my channel for more future videos. Thanks for watching.